Instead of summarizing the week, I thought to myself, we just ended Q1. Let's summarize the quarter. Are you ready for it? Let's go. Hello and welcome back to the channel on Micah Stocks from Stock Talk with Micah Stocks, where we talk about stocks, we talk about the weekly market summary, and in this video, we're going to talk about the quarterly summary of 2023. New location, new background, colors are not yet adjusted, that's going to be fixed in a few days. This is our channel, just a quick reminder, anything you see here is not financial advice, it's just for entertainment and educational purposes only. If you're new, it would be great if you can subscribe to the channel and of course, smash that like button. Okay, when we think of the quarter that we went through, this tweet would summarize everything. 31st of January, Michael Burry, the big short, came out and said, sell, period. Two days ago, came out, tweeted again. I was wrong to say sell. And I think that represents in the best way how some investors, which were bearish, found themselves on the wrong side of the trade. Let's dive in. And in this video, we're going to look a bit more of the charts, more than we usually do, especially on these weekly summaries, to get a better perspective. What we see here is the four major averages. We see the Dow Jones, we see the S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell. NASDAQ ended year to date, ended Q1 with a plus 20.49%. When we look at October lows, NASDAQ is up over 25%. S&P, second, 7%. The Russell, 269 and that's also mainly due to the regional banks, which pulled it back after the Silicon Valley. We're going to talk about that. And Dow Jones, almost onch, but still positive. The reason why Q1 was so surprising to a lot of bears is technology outperformed in a dramatic way anything that happened before. When we look at a different sectors, let's zoom in on our sectors, we can see that the best performers of last year were kind of the worst performers this year. Energy. Year to date, minus 4%. 2022 was an amazing year for energy, actually 2021 and 2022. And they're opening the year with minus 4%. Anything can happen from here. But I'm just mentioning that on the opposite side. Look at technology, 21.6. Communication services, 21%. And consumer discretionary, 16%. When we look at the U.S. industries, we can see, of course, regional banks with Silicon Valley, Signature Bank, and of course, um, other banks that are right now struggling with their balance sheet. Oil services down 8%, but when we scroll all the way down, semiconductors, we're going to see which companies, of course, up 29%. Internet, 20%. Software, 19 Home builders. Home builders is, is an amazing I would say subsectors, we're going to talk about it when we talk about Powell and the Fed. Look at the heat map. Year to date, you can see the difference in behavior. We can see technology outperforming in a dramatic way. Healthcare, which is considered a defensive sector. Outperforming financials, we know why. Outperforming energy. And that's where most of the traders found themselves on the wrong side. They were going with the same narrative of 2021, 2022, saying 2023 is going to be the same because there's going to be a recession, because um, PEs should come down, because revenue is going to go down and earnings going to go down. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. We are just entering now the first month of reports for Q1, but yet... This is what we see, right? At the end of the day, if you dollar cost average your way into NVIDIA or Apple or Google or Microsoft, this is what you, you got. Year to date, NVIDIA is up 81%. You might say, Micah, look, but it went down so hard that going up 81% doesn't mean a lot. It means a lot. At the end of the day, 81% 
in three months is dramatic. Meta, we're going to talk about Meta in a few minutes, up 68%. Tesla, 55%. AMD, 49%. Shopify, on the other side, we can see Enphase and Solar. And of course, Energy not performing the way they should. Everyone is talking about the yield curve, the difference between the tens and the twos. Why are they talking about it? Well, the dotted line here is the zero. When you, when you detract one from the other, we're supposed to be at a point where if you buy a 10-year bond, you get higher interest than a two-year bond. Anytime that two-year is above 10 and we go underneath the dotted line, it means that the shorter term it gives you or provides you a better gain than longer term, which represents in historical basis, uh, let's say a, a hazard or a, brings you a light up saying there's going to be a recession. We're not yet in a recession, but since July, we have been inverted in the yield curve, which should result in a recession. I'm saying should because it didn't happen yet. But we can see the yield curve is going down. It even came to a differentiation between one and the other of 1%, which is crazy. That's going to be something we're going to talk about in Q2 as well. Not only Q1, but that led Q1. When I tried to think of what was the number one major event, major event that can change everything. It would be OpenAI, Microsoft, and ChatGPT. ChatGPT and the latest version, GPT-4, is a game changer in everything we knew so far. It's a game changer in the way sales teams are going to operate. It's a game changer in the way developers are going to work. It's a game changer in the way we interact with a software that might be the most smart, the smartest person in the room. And when we look at the combination between Microsoft and OpenAI, Satya Nadal and Sam Altman that you can see here, no doubt are my Q1 men of the quarter with the cooperation, with, uh, with the agreement, one with the other. And if you haven't tested out ChatGPT yet, if you haven't used it yet, you're doing something wrong. So those are, in my opinion, the ones that are going to lead the whole, you know what? It might be the, the reinvention of the internet with Google finding themselves chasing this, all, this whole AI phenomena. Meta, not talking anymore about the metaverse, talking about the AI-verse or just AI without the verse. Everyone is chasing the only big company that we haven't heard from in the world of AI is Apple. We might hear from them as well. Second thing, from a macro perspective, Fed hikes led us through the quarter. Every time they met, they increased the Fed funds. We are now between 4.75 and 5% Fed funds. Why is that dramatic? Well, because there are problems with that. The first thing is that it seems like inflation is turning the corner. If inflation is turning the corner, according to Bespoke, then very soon, about two, three months from now, we would be at least 1% or 100 basis points, if not lower than that, than the Fed funds rate, which means that the Fed will need to, have to, should, choose the word you, were, you want, will need to reduce rates. That's how the bond market sees. Bond market sees here, it's a better representation of that. The bond market believes that there might be another 25 basis points, and that's it. And very rapidly from there, Feds are, Fed rates are going to go down. Fed rates are going to go down might mean two different things. Option number one, something broke. Silicon Valley Bank. Fed, uh, we're going to talk about that in a second, but Fed needed to do something to provide liquidity to the banks. So that's one thing that broke. Second thing, another option is that inflation is dead. But both options will reduce Fed funds rate. Maybe if we go back to the NASDAQ, maybe this whole increase is the market already pricing in 
the reduction of the rates because the market is a future looking machine. They're looking six to nine months ahead. And if that's the case, maybe the market is already signaling that the fear is behind us. I don't know. I'm going to talk about the fear in a second. Silicon Valley Bank, a bank that was very focused on tech, provided them liquidity, provided them anything they wanted. But when push came to shove in 24 hours, the first, let's say Thursday, $42 billion were, were transferred. Friday, in the pipeline before the bank opened, there were $100 billion waiting to be transferred. FDIC controls the bank, closes the bank, shuts it down. Of course, everyone got their money back, but a new bank run was invented. The social media bank run. If Peter Thiel wouldn't expose or if he uh, wouldn't tell everyone that he ordered all his companies to withdraw the money, maybe Silicon Valley Bank would still be afloat. No one knows. But we do know one thing. This created a huge turmoil between the regional banks and the, the SIPs, the four big banks, where basically anyone that has more than $250,000, which is FDIC insured, asks themselves, why should I keep money in a regional bank if I'm not insured on my money? Yes, the government jumped in and the Fed jumped in. Who knows if it's going to happen again? This was a major event that's going to change a lot of things. It's going to create more regulations, more problems for bigger banks, which will reduce their earnings and, of course, hurt their uh, hurt hurt their stock price. We already saw that in regional banks falling and, of course, financials. The other big story for the quarter, and of course, this chart starts from, from October, but it doesn't really matter. Layoffs, layoffs, layoffs. After a rapid year and a half or two years where anyone that wanted to work somewhere probably could have gotten a job, we are at a different climate right now. 149,000 people lost their jobs working for technology. 108,000 lost from consumer discretionary. And you can see the difference in the bubble chart here. 473,000 people lost their jobs. We're not seeing it yet in the data. The data isn't showing it as of yet because some got severance. Some found jobs very quickly, but some will uh, result in the data itself. And that's something the Fed is looking to see a cooler labor market. Meta, the biggest story, I believe, it's not cutting 10,000, which is an additional 10,000 to what they already cut. It's this letter, the year of efficiency. If up to now Meta was talking about the metaverse, now Zuckerberg following the footsteps of Elon Musk in Twitter saying this year Meta is going to focus on efficiency and when he talks about efficiency he talks about middle management he's reducing he being zuckerberg and of course uh, meta reducing middle management saying we don't want a company that has a manager that is managing a manager that is managing a manager and they're basically squishing their pyramid or their different roles and creating more individual contributors Will this experiment be the experiment of 2023? I believe so. I believe a lot of companies would follow their footsteps with, if you ask me, Google being the next one in line to reduce the levels, the middle management, and not firing people, by the way, just making them become individual contributors rather than managers. How will those managers react? How will the market react to that? It's going to f it's going to be something that's Siri talking while while I'm speaking, but that's something we're going to talk about during the quarter. Let's keep on diving in to other things that made the quarter. TikTok. We have about a year and a half till the next presidential uh, to the presidential race or the um, the presidency. I believe that in the next year and a half, something is going to happen with TikTok. If you ask me. They're going to be banned this way or the other. Right now, there is some kind of document circulating, which is a bipartisan document. The problem is that it doesn't ban only TikTok. It bans almost anything that the government wants to ban. 
Do we really want that kind of document? Well, that's the big question. So TikTok, although it's not publicly traded, it is going to create a lot of opportunities. Meta, Instagram, Reels, maybe Snapchat. That's something we're going to follow, of course, in the next quarters. And we're very close to ending this quarterly kind of coverage with how we ended the quarter from sentiment perspective. Now, why am I showing you this? Let's jump between two different slides. Let's start with what we're seeing here. Historical averages, bears versus bulls, 31% for bears, 37.5 for bulls. Around 31, 30, kind of neutral. The week of the 22nd, these are investment sentiments. We are at 48.9 bulls, uh, bears, sorry, negative, 20.9 bulls. When you look at this, you might say, of course, that's the sentiment. We are probably down 40% from the peak. We are probably at the worst financial circumstances that we could. But we're not. The Nasdaq is up 20%. S&P is up 7%. I, rem I remind you that the average is 10%. Russell is up 2.69. And we know why it's not up a lot more than that. Because if we didn't have Silicon Valley, we would be higher than this. And even Russell up 0.38. So when we talk about all these things, we need to remember that there is something very, very strange going behind the scenes between sentiment sentiment and of course where the market is and with that and with the location changing from the middle of manhattan to my greek beach house where i see the waves and i can hear the the ocean in my in my ears i want to thank you for joining me on this coverage of the squatter we are going to talk about a lot, a lot of new things in the next quarter. Maybe the cadence of the videos will increase. Maybe there will be more videos during the week. So don't forget, if you enjoyed, to subscribe, to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week, which will be a regular weekly summary. Till next time, I'm Micah Stocks. Bye-bye.